I know you are interested in the arable weeds, the ones which compete uh, with the crops. But we thought you we should also talk about these weeds, which occur in our uh, lakes, dams, or even it could be irrigation canals. So aquatic weeds are those uh, unwanted plants uh, which are found in water. By the end of this lecture, probably you will be able to identify the most important uh, weeds, aquatic weeds in Zimbabwe. Uh, you may be able to understand the problems which are caused by these aquatic weeds. And also you should be able to understand the methods which are used to control these weeds. In Zimbabwe, we've got about seven uh, aquatic weeds, uh, which are found to be problematic uh, in water bodies. Number one, we've got Ikino, Iconia crassips. This is what I asked. You may have heard about it. Sarvinia molesta, this is cariba weed or Sarvinia. Then the Pistia stratioids, water lettuce. Now the ones marked red are the major ones. Then we have got a uh, Miriophilium aquaticum parotis feather. Azora fricoids, number five, red water fan. Then hydrocotyl ranuculoids, pennywet, and the minobium lavigatum, which is, this is likely to be a potential uh, problem. But sometimes it is observed uh, in aquatic uh, systems. Now, this is the map for Zimbabwe. We were going to find aquatic weeds, uh, the, the rivers and the dams. So we've got rivers and dams, that's where we are going to find the aquatic weeds. Now, what sort of problems do we get uh, from aquatic weeds? Well, imagine if you are having uh, irrigation systems, you are taking water from canals, you could have a blockage of canals, rivers, water pipes. <coughs> so they can block the flow of water. They can interfere with the boat movement. interfere with the commercial and the recreational fishing. They can provide habitats for vectors of human disease, such as malaria, schistosomiasis.
Again, because uh, evapotranspiration, there could be loss of water from the dams. For example, which when they estimated that uh, 3.5 times uh, water loss is experienced in fresh uh, in fresh uh, in uh, in with free actually more water loss is ex experienced in uh, with infested uh, areas compared to water free surface by a difference of 3.5 uh, times Decaying mates of the weed can deplete uh, oxygen, uh, causing a uh, death of fish. Now, aquatic weeds can reduce light penetration. This can affect the aquatic life. So this is what I think interfering with the movement of bots. Here we have got, uh, here this is Harare, Lake Chiro, Lake Miami. This is where we have uh, water I think. This is lecture and we have got a bit of water license near the dam wall. But in some parts of this lake, we have this uh, water license. So this is water license, Iconia Crassips. Actually, the reason why we are having this problem is that uh, some people were attracted by this flower. So they wanted to use this uh, in their ponds because of this nice flower. And as a result, you know, this weed is kept, or this plant is kept. It's now a serious uh, problem. It was an, uh, an ornamental plant at first, then it's now a weed. This, its structure, this inflated stalk, makes it float in easily in water. Because its roots would be, you know, will be getting nutrients from the from the water. So this is a, a mature water essence plant. This is through vegetative reproduction. It's another small plant being uh, produced. Now, on the identification of what I asked, <coughs> it belongs to the plant family called the Pondi Derasi. And it was first reported in Manyame River System near Arare in 1937. Probably prior to this date, some people had brought it in as an ornamental. It originated from Amazon. Uh, it's a floating weed. Reproduces, it reproduces a sanctuary and a sanctuary. So it can reproduce vegetatively and from seed. 
The flowers are quite attractive, light blue or violet uh, flowers. Now the leaves have got this spongy inflated petal, which makes the plant float in water, and it can easily move due to the movement of uh, wind. It has roots, rhizomes, and the stolons. Most of the content of this weed is 95% water. So where do we find the water hyacinth? It's mostly in the Miami River. It was reported in the Miami River is from 1937. It's still there. Uh, Lake Chivero, it was reported in 1956. Probably when they constructed this uh, dam at Lake Chivero, then they had this problem. Miami Dam, Lake Mtiriqui in Mashingo. Dams in triangle in shreds there. Also in the wetlands in Shinamora, Shinamora, Mutoko, and Bindura. Now, what could be causing serious problems in the lecture could be sewage and industrial effluent from Harare and Chitungis, which are rich in phosphorus and nitrogen. And this can cause eutrophic uh, conditions. It can actually cause that weed to grow in, in these aquatic systems. The same thing is happening in Lake Mtiriqui because of sewage from uh, Mashingo town. Stream bank cultivation can cause, you know, fertilizers to be washed into the rivers and they end up uh, increasing phosphorus and nitrogen, which boost the growth of this uh, wheat. So the reason why <coughs> we are having this weed could be a reflection of the nutrients which are being loaded in the aquatic systems. This can be a weed, difficult weed to control, although we can use uh, mechanical methods. You know, when we use mechanical methods, it breaks and it increases. Uh, infestation. So there's need to physically remove the weed from the lake. This can require a lot of labor. It may require use of heavy machinery, heavy vehicles. Since it is 95% water, you know, it can be heavy. Uh, or costly to transport. Chemicals which have been used in the past are 2,4-D and the glyphosate. But 2,4-D was stopped because it was linked to steel beds and the child deformities. What could be ideal is to use biological uh, control. Uh, there are two insects, Neocotina econia and Neocotina bruchi. Now, these were introduced in 1988 in the lecture. Uh, they were taken from uh, Florida.
However, at some point, 24D was applied. This interfered with the, you know, with the growth of these uh, insects. Uh, to date, the degree of control from these insects is variable because uh, a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus, you know, are increasing in this uh, lake and the water hyacinth is responding from these uh, nutrients by rapid growth. But in clean water, these insects have actually controlled this uh, water hyacinth. So these are the Neocatina species or water hyacinth weevils. So these insects eat, uh, eat the water hyacinth. It looks like a lettuce, the ones which we use or eat. Some call it Nairo cabbage. Probably because of its shape, but it looks like a lettuce. So this is the floating water lettuce. Probably it looks like cabbage. These are the flowers. So it looks like an open head of lettuce. At some point, it used it to be a problem uh, in Lake uh, in Lake Chivero. It's a cluster of soft, airy green leaves grouped in a rosette. It has feathery roots which are hanging below it when it floats in water. It has hidden flowers. No, its flowers are not distinct. These are the flowers. It reproduces by seeds and vegetatively. The daughter plants are connected to the mother plant through short stolons. This was identified in the 1950s. I've seen this weed at one point in the Lake Chivero, but uh, it seems to have uh, sort of disappeared. What is now commonly seen is water hyacinth. Uh, this has been reported in Manyame River, Seke Dem, Lake Chivero, Mureo, Amtoko, Mount Darwin districts, then Zambezi River. Control, mechanical control can be used as well as chemical control, similar to what we can do to water acids. Now, the insects which were used, or the insect which was used, originated from Queensland. Neohydronomus affinis, uh, they were taken in 1987. I mean, after introducing this uh, insect, 
uh, in the next year, within 15 months, uh, the weed was gone. There was good weed control. So this was very efficient. So this is one of the successful biological weed control, which was done in Zimbabwe. So the neo Adrenomus affinis successfully controlled daughter lettuce in all places at which it is uh, present. So this weed is no longer a problem in Zimbabwe. The other weed is Sarvinia molesta, Sarvinia or Cariba weed. This is what it looks like. You may be interested to note that wherever this weed is found is also commonly known as Cariba weed. This can tell us that at one point it was very serious. So this is Cariba wheat, that's what it looks like. It has got a sort of velvet sort of appearance. In Cariba wheat, these are the roots. It is floating in water. So it's the world is West aquatic weed. It's a free floating aquatic fan. So it reached its phenomenal uh, invasion in Cariba, in Lake Cariba in 1962. It is native to southern Brazil. It consists of many branched horizontal stems which float below the water surface. Like I said, the leaf is a velvet appearance. Reproduction is asexual. Where do we find it? Lake Cariba, small farm dams in Karoi, Rusape River, Lower Mtiriki River. This is Cariba Dam. This is the world distribution of Sarvinia. Or Cariba wheat. So it is found in these places. <clears throat> now, biological control was used to solve this uh, problem. In Zimbabwe, they had to release an insect known as. Paulinia acuminata, uh, which is an aquatic grasshopper. And this aquatic grasshopper successfully controlled Sarovinia molesta in Lake Cariba. Another insect known as Cytobagas sarovinia, which is a weevil also successfully controlled uh, this weed. At present, this weed is no longer a serious uh, issue uh, where this evil, uh, where this weevil is actually present. Cytobagas sarvinia.
Uh, this is the side of Bagas Sarovinia Weevil, the one which eats uh, this weed. The next weed is Azola Filiculoids, red water fern. So that's what it looks like. This is the red water fern. So that's what it looks like. A biological control was used on the red water fan uh, since the 1990s. The insect uh, was introduced from South Africa in 1998. It's known as Stenopermas rufinasas. Stenopermas rufinasas. It's also a weevil uh, which was able to control this uh, weed at most sites. The other weed is Miriophilium, Miriophilium aquaticum, parrot feather. You see the, the, the weed the, it looks like a uh, Feathers, parrot feather. Biological control also solved this uh, problem. They used a leaf beetle, a Lysatia species. Uh, it really damaged the, the, the plant. This insect uh, was released in South Africa in Hydrocotyl ranunculoids pennywort. Uh, this is part of a uh, lecture. At one time, this weed uh, was the dominant weed in that lake. Hydrocotyl ranunculoids. This weed is slowly increasing in numerous water bodies as a result of water hyacinth and water lettuce being uh, controlled. And there is no biological control for this weed as yet. So we may have to rely on a glyphosate. This is the last weed, the Elimino the um, Navigatum. It's not yet a serious problem, but uh, it is likely to be a future problem. Elimino the um, Navigatum. So you can see this is the Luminobium lavigatum with its suspended roots in water.
Liminobiam navigatam The Minobium navigatum originates from Central and Southern America, and it's likely to be a potential problem uh, in this uh, country. So these are the seven aquatic weeds which we thought uh, we need to know. So I'll stop here. Okay, so this is it about uh, aquatic weeds. Any questions? Am I alone or you are there? No, today, Padok, no questions here. Okay, so these are the two topics which I wanted you to. Because we thought at least you should have an idea about uh, aquatic weeds, also an idea about the evolution of uh, of weeds, so that uh, probably. As far as the evolution about the evolution of weeds is concerned, it may help us to understand why weeds are always there. So next time I meet you, we'll be talking about uh, weed management. So Dr. Rugare will take over and introduce uh, weed management. At some point, I will join in. Also, talk about uh, weed management because we have uh, now covered the basic biology of uh, weeds. What I will do, at some point, I will send you some assignments. Plus one practical. Are you able to meet and do it at Kutsaga? Prakia <laughs> I will make a prank which will not interfere with your operations there. Uh, it, will just, it, it will just require you to do some weed counts in a field. Uh, not knowing how far we buy is from here. Where is Ruzag? Butaga, it's uh, after airport on your way to Miami. Yeah. Okay. I thought there's one working at Kutaga. Yes, I am. But we uh we buy and Isaac are a bit far off. But they are in a rally. Yes. I thought uh, or you could come to use it. Yes, I'm going to talk and open something. Okay, I'm going to go and arrange. Go zaga wash to end. Oh, that's a big deal. Not a big deal. The practical will just involve uh, to do some. Uh, Weed counts, then scoring, so that we compare the two systems. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the I moment, we need to ask Sarah Shaw. I 
I think with the identification we have done that with the Dr. Gary. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so this will be just the, with the assessments, population, I mean, just counting and assessing. We use two diff different methods and they try to correlate these two methods. Okay. So I will just post the assignments later this week. All right. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Good day.